today's video, we're going to learn how to read plumbing drawings. By the end of this video, you'll be able to locate plumbing fixtures in a drawing set, understand how plumbing equipment and fixtures are piped, as well as understand how our plumbers coordinate with other trades on the job site. So let's go! Okay, so if you've watched some of my other drawing review videos, you already know how we're going to kick this off. But if you're new to this video series, I would highly suggest starting at the top of my drawing review video playlist. So before we jump into the specific details, we're going to focus on understanding the plans from a high level. I always suggest this for drawing sets, starting with the zoomed out overview and then working ourselves further into smaller details. Also, each drawing set should come with a set of specifications and we should read through those to further understand the requirements for the plumbing scope on this project. Each drawing page that we'll look at will have general notes and keynotes and we'll take a look at a couple examples of those later on in this video. So this method is going to help you understand the project as a whole and the overall building functionality as it relates to plumbing and other drawing sets such as architectural, mechanical, electrical, and how they all interact. The plumbing drawings are going to include water supply, which would be your hot water, cold water, or chilled water as it comes into the building, which is connected to your site civil set of drawings. Plumbing drawings include your stormwater piping, which is your rainwater collected through a series of roof drains that flow inside or outside of your building to ultimately connect back into your site civil stormwater piping as well. These plumbing drawings will also include your sanitary piping, which is your toilets, showers, floor drains, up to the point where, again, it ties into your site civil piping, as well as all the sanitary vent piping that regulates airflow and prevents a vacuum that would cause slow draining or buildup of gases and odors within your system. Plumbing drawings might also include gas piping, which is needed for boilers or other equipment. However, this might be also found in your mechanical drawings depending on the project. Lastly, we're going to see all the valves, equipment, and fixtures that complete the system. So we're going to now flip through each drawing page in this plumbing drawing set, reading each sheet number, sheet name, which is all going to tell us more about this project as a whole. So first up, we have PD-01, Foundation Demolition. So this is going to be the demo of all plumbing piping related to your foundation and below, which is just your floor level and below. Next, we have PD-2.1, First Floor Demolition, which is again the continuation of demolition above that foundation. On to PS-0.1 Site Plan Plumbing. The plumbing drawings show everything inside the building to approximately five feet outside of the perimeter of the building. We look at the civil plans to see the continuation of this piping. These are usually two separate contractors completing the civil scope and the plumbing scope. As part of a basic cross check, I also like to make sure that these plumbing pipes physically align with the civil set of drawings. Additionally, we need to make sure that the inverts of the piping, meaning the elevation which the piping exits the building, aligns with the inverts of the civil drawings. This is always a good check because these pipes will likely pass through the inside of the building to the outside of the building through your concrete foundation wall. Lastly, it's good to do a check that the pipe sizing matches between the two as well. Sometimes your civil engineer and your plumbing engineer work for two separate companies when putting together these design drawings, so there could be a conflict between the two that we can catch before the work takes place in the field. Next up, we have P-0.1 Foundation Plumbing, which is all your underground plumbing within the perimeter or the inside of the building. Then we have P-2.1 First Floor Plumbing, which is going to be the bulk of the plumbing on this project, which feeds all the equipment, all the fixtures, and everything else where the supply and return piping is going. P-2.2 Roof Plan Plumbing. So earlier I talked about those roof drains and this is why we have the roof plan plumbing set to see where those locations tie in at the roof level. We have P-3.1 Mechanical Room and Penthouse Floor Part Plans. Then we have P-6.1 Domestic Water and Sanitary Vent Riser Diagrams, which is a great visual. Pretend like you were standing in front of the piping. This is exactly what you would see. And same thing on this next page, P-6.2 LP gas and vacuum system riser diagrams. Then we have P-7.1 piping support details, which again just gets further into the nitty gritty. This is going to show us how the pipes are supported as well as how pipes penetrate different walls such as your concrete foundation walls or similar. So here we have P-7.2 plumbing fixture and equipment details. So we have all this plumbing piping routing throughout 
throughout the building. Ultimately, it needs to feed fixtures or equipment. This piping drawing is gonna show us the details of how that piping enters and exits each piece of fixture or equipment from a scaled up view. And on P7.3, miscellaneous plumbing details, we're just gonna see a continuation of that for all the oddball conditions that they needed to add into this drawing set. And finally, the most important page when you're learning how to read plumbing drawings is P9.1, plumbing schedules, notes, and legends. And we're actually gonna start on this page to figure out what everything means on all these other pages. So we're on P9.1 and we're gonna read through everything to familiarize ourselves with how this engineer put together these drawings. The plumbing drawings are gonna be a series of lines and symbols throughout the building. So let's start with the symbols column. This first set of symbols tells us what part of the piping system we're looking at based on how it's drawn. So our cold water will have a line with a small dash. Our hot water will have a solid line with two dashes. Our vent piping is a continuation of dashed lines. Below these, we see all of our valves, which will each serve a different purpose in our overall plumbing system. If you don't know what each of these valves look like or what they do, just do a Google image search to familiarize yourself with them. So below that, I'm gonna have us focus on these two next symbols. This top symbol indicates that a pipe has been installed horizontally to the point where this circle symbol is, and then the pipe turns and actually goes upwards. The bottom symbol indicates that the pipe has been installed horizontally to the point where the circle is with this line inside, and then the pipe actually turns and goes down. So just read through the remainder of these symbols and what they mean and what they look like, and then you can always revisit this page as reference in the future. Next, we're gonna jump back to the top of the page and read through the abbreviations, which will help us understand the drawings even further. We're gonna start with CW which stands for cold water, and this is our cold water piping line. The next item we're gonna look at is FD, which stands for floor drain. Further down from that, we have HW, meaning hot water. Below that, we have HWR, which stands for hot water return. This tells us that the piping in this system loops based on this hot water returning back to a point, which is typically a piece of equipment or a pump. Now I'm gonna jump ahead for a minute and look at this pipe run on this other drawing page, which has the abbreviation LP. I didn't see our abbreviation LP in the abbreviation schedule or in our symbols chart. So what does LP stand for? Well, we're just gonna to have to use some context clues from elsewhere in the drawings or just Google what LP gas stands for. Now, if we're really stumped on this, we can always issue an RFI, which is a request for information, but we won't need that in this case. It stands for liquefied petroleum. And jumping back to our abbreviation list, we have RD, which is roof drain. That leads us into SW, which is our stormwater or rainwater piping. We're not gonna forget SAN or S, which stands for our sanitary piping. Below that, we have up and DN, simply meaning the pipe turns up or the pipe turns down. And the last abbreviation that we'll look at is VTR, which means vented through roof. Again, venting is to regulate air in the system to allow proper drainage and avoid buildup of gases and odors in your sanitary system. Okay, we're gonna try to remember all those abbreviations for this video, but again, we can always flip back to this abbreviation and symbol chart to reference what they mean after we're looking at the actual drawing pages. It's just good to know where they're at and get a baseline for what we'll be looking at in the future. Next, we're gonna look at the plumbing notes. Okay, note A says to coordinate new work between all disciplines. So we'll look at this later in the drawing set, but plumbing drawings as well as mechanical and electrical drawings don't typically show elevations of piping, meaning on projects with limited spacing in ceilings or elsewhere, you'll have to either coordinate your piping in the field to make sure that your plumbing piping doesn't clash or run into mechanical ductwork or similar. And on complex projects, this is actually usually accomplished before anyone steps foot in the field through BIM coordination. BIM stands for Building Information Modeling or VDC, which stands for Virtual Design and Construction, which is just 3D modeling of each of the trades piping where you can run clash detection to avoid wasted time on the actual job site. This allows you to coordinate all your piping runs in advance. Okay, so jumping down to note I, this states to install the piping so that the valves are accessible. The drawings show us a plumbing pipe and a plumbing valve, but this note tells the plumber to be conscious of the end user, which is the facility's maintenance team. So you're gonna read through the rest of these notes as you would on every other page. Finally, we've got a fixture schedule and a plumbing schedule, which provides us information on what our piping is actually going to serve. So on the fixture schedule, we see that there's a P1, which is a water closet or a toilet. 
P2 is a urinal. P3 is a lavatory, which is a sink or a wash basin in the US. And I'll just note that this may have a different meaning in other countries if you're working internationally. P5 is a countersink, so on and so forth. Moving down to the pump schedule, we see RP-1, which is a hot water recirculation pump. Earlier, we saw the piping HWR, which stood for hot water return. Okay, so let's put some of this information to good use and jump to PD-0.1, our foundation piping demolition drawings. In the general notes, we see note number one, which tells us that we can't just demo the pipe. If we're the plumber, we also have to patch any holes we create from demolition. This is a general note that's applicable to the whole page. Below that are key notes. We have notes numbers one through four, and they relate to specific locations on this specific drawing page. Note one says RX, sanitary piping below slab as indicated. So RX wasn't on that abbreviation page, and this is just part of the overall learning curve in construction, remembering these items from previous projects or just talking to a plumber to learn these items. In this case, we're on a demolition drawing, so RX stands for remove existing in each of these conditions. Sliding over onto the drawing set, we see everywhere where we're going to remove existing sanitary piping below the slab as indicated per this keynote number one. So a general takeaway on demolition plans is that they typically show items to be demolished as dashed lines and items to remain either as solid lines or grayed out lines. Now something to think about if you're demoing storm piping as part of your project is to consider the timing of it. If you demo your storm piping but don't temporarily reroute your roof drains, when it rains the water is going to enter the roof drain and then just pour into the building because it has no place to go. So you've got to plan this approach in a renovation project in advance. Similarly, when you're getting ready to install your roof on a new building, you want to have already completed your site civil storm piping connection to the city storm piping. When you start building up your new roof, you want to be able to tie your building storm piping to your roof drains right away. Your roof is going to become this big bucket that collects rainwater as soon as it's built, and you want to have these draining systems coordinated to carry the water away from your project. So we're going to skip over PD 2.1, which is just a continuation of your piping demolition. The only difference is the first page was everything below the floor slab. PD 2.1 was everything above the floor slab. Okay, let's take a look at PS 0.1, our site plan plumbing. We see where our water is going to continue into the building from our site. This note says combine water and fire protection, which tells me that this building requires a fire sprinkler system. It also gives us the invert of the pipe, which is the elevation at which it comes into the building. And if you're working in colder climates, I'd suggest you back check this against the finished grade, which you can find on the civil plans versus this invert to ensure that you've got enough ground coverage, which will prevent freezing in the winter. These coordination items are all items that the design team should typically pick up and cover in the design itself, but it's always good to do a back check as design teams are human as well and everyone makes mistakes now and again. Next to that is our LP gas line. Moving on from there, we see our sanitary and our stormwater piping leaving the building to connect to the site civil piping. This tells us the size of the piping and the invert, again the elevation at which they all leave the building. Further along this drawing, we have the fire department connection, also abbreviated as FDC. This will be important to our fire sprinkler contractor as it allows the fire department to connect their pumper truck to this line which supplements water into the sprinkler system during a fire. Last, we see another SW or stormwater connection leaving the building. If you watch my other civil drawing review video in this series, I covered this area specifically, which will give you a full picture of how the building gets rid of stormwater in general. All right, I've got a shameless plug. If you have learned something and you're not currently subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It helps with the exposure of this channel so that other people like you can start learning as well. All right, let's get back to it with P-0.1, the foundation plumbing plan. So this sheet's gonna show us all of our underground plumbing inside the building, and we can see those outside lines continuing to the inside. We see this CO on the outside, which stands for clean out, which is a service point where the facilities team can open up a cover and access the sanitary line to help clear out any potential clog or backup in the line at a future date. If we follow these lines, we can just trace them and see where they go throughout the building. 
These dashed gray lines represent the foundation walls and ultimately architectural walls where our piping will continue through. Each line is identified with the abbreviations we looked at earlier to help us identify what the plumbing line is. We see SAN for sanitary. Moving over, we see SW for stormwater. Moving over again, we see LP for gas. And then finally, moving on, we see V up which stands for vent piping up. Now jumping back to this sanitary line, if I follow the piping, it leads to three circles. Remember, these symbols indicate that the piping stops being run horizontally and turns and goes vertically upwards. This one specifically identified as a FD, which if you recall stands for floor drain. Let's look at this on the next drawing page and see how it relates. Okay, so we're on P-2.1 first floor plumbing and we're gonna look at the same area. This page is a continuation of any piping that was underground being fed up into the building. I'm looking at the same spot. However, I see eight of these symbols in this area versus the three that we saw previously. Well, that one is a floor drain and it's further detailed here on this page. These other two follow as a dash line and continue up to this note V up. The V up pipe is a circle, meaning that it goes up whereas these pipes indicate that they go back down and connect into the under slab piping. There are a couple other pipes in this area showing that they're coming down, but remember, they didn't come from underground. That's because these are HW and CW pipes, standing for hot water and cold water that are fed from elsewhere in the building. Also in this area, we see P5A, which from our fixture chart stood for counter sink, and P9A, which stood for eye and face wash. If we just follow these lines, we see that they're fed from a cold water line and a hot water line, CW and HW. If I flip back to the underground drawings, we see that the water drains into our sanitary lines and leave the building via gravity. Okay, jumping back to our first floor plumbing plan and sliding over a little bit, we see a lot of different symbols. These relate back to our valve chart, and we can identify which valves get installed in each set of piping runs based on these symbols. So you're just gonna follow each of these lines to see where they originate from and where they end up and which piece of equipment or fixture they serve until you've worked your way through the entire drawing set. Remember to read all the page notes along the way to fully understand all the requirements of the project. So to finish up reviewing this drawing page, let's take a look at this last item, four inch SW up to RD. We know the pipe size, which is four inches. We know SW stands for stormwater. We know that this pipe turns up and it goes to an RD, which stands for a roof drain. So moving down this stormwater pipe, we actually see this note for 1%, which tells us the pitch of the pipe. Since stormwater comes from the roof and needs to be fed via gravity, there has to be some pitch of this pipe to carry the stormwater through the entire system and ultimately into our site civil piping. If we move further along in this drawing, we see our CW and HW pipes or our cold water and hot water pipes don't have this same pitch because they're not gravity fed. Cold water and hot water need to be under pressure, such as from a city's water tower or a recirculating pump in the case of our hot water return to constantly push water throughout the building. All right, I'm gonna follow this four inch stormwater pipe and go up to the next page, which is our P2.2 roof plan plumbing set. And I'm gonna take a look at this roof drain right where we were on the previous page. All right, we see the continuation of our storm drain up into our roof drain. And right next to our roof drain, we see an OFD, which stands for overflow drain. Now overflow drains are there as a safety measure in case our main roof drain becomes clogged or if there's a severe rainfall. When the roof drains can't keep up with the flow of water, these secondary overflow drains are in place installed at a slightly higher elevation to pick up the slack. So the plumbing contractor has to coordinate the install of these roof and overflow drains along with any other piping that penetrates the roof with the roofing contractor to ensure that they're flashed properly and that they're not gonna be a point of failure during a heavy rainfall. Now, if I jump back to P0.1, our foundation plumbing plan, we can piece together the full stormwater piping system and all the connections, showing how the stormwater goes from the roof, flows through the building, and then ultimately out into our site civil stormwater piping. Okay, jumping ahead to P3.1 mechanical room and penthouse floor, we see how our piping hooks up to our equipment. I'm gonna zoom in here and just note at this intersection, these pipes don't actually connect. They're just passing by one another. 
The solid line typically will indicate that this pipe is above these other pipes. Moving on to P6.1, we see our riser diagrams. These show us yet another view of how the piping, valves, and equipment should be installed. We have two for domestic water and one for sanitary and vent risers on this drawing page. On the next page, sheet P6.2, we've got the same thing except it's for gas and our vacuum system. Moving on, we have P7.1, which gets us into the details of various pipe hangers and penetration conditions. Looking at detail seven specifically on this page, it shows us how we'd hang our pipe from either a concrete deck or attaching to structural joists or beams. And right above that detail, I see two other details showing us how a pipe would penetrate through an interior wall condition, as well as through a concrete foundation wall. So again, you're just gonna read through all of these notes on all these drawing pages, and if something trips you up, just spend a little bit more time on that. This is where field experience comes into play because it's much easier to visualize something on a drawing set haven't seen it in person. You take lessons from past projects as to why some details may have failed or were not constructible, and you can carry those on future projects when you're reviewing drawings. It's just much more easier to visualize stuff when you're looking at these symbols and you can picture what it will look like in the field. Okay, moving on to our next page, P7.2, which is our plumbing fixture and equipment detail page. Let's take a look at detail 22. We see exactly how a water closet or a toilet would be hooked up in this overall plumbing system. Right next to that is our detail 23, which shows our lavatories or our sink details in a similar fashion. Now there might be some connections between our plumbing piping and our mechanical equipment. Now we might not necessarily find everything we need on the plumbing drawings, so we should flip through the mechanical set to understand what that coordination looks like. The same goes with electrical. The electrician is likely going to look through these material equipment schedules as well as some middles to understand some of that information. I'm gonna flip back to our pump schedule where I see electrical requirements for this pump are called out as 120 volt single phase 60 hertz to give you an example. Now the plumbing contractor should be providing this pump because that's what's reflected in this drawing set. But that's not always the case as sometimes the owner will allow substitutions of equipment, meaning this pump could be submitted with a different electrical requirement than what's shown on the drawings. Now the electrician should be provided cut sheets by the plumber to match the updated power requirements so that the substituted equipment is actually going to run on the correct power. This is a bit of the coordination process that takes place on the front end if material and equipment is going to be substituted. In another example, the plumbing contractor may request product cut sheets from another contractor to verify items such as water supply line sizing. For instance, if a coffee maker needs a quarter inch water supply line, but the drawings call for a half inch water supply line, the plumber technically owes half inch per the drawings, but that's not gonna get the coffee maker working at the end of the day. So it's good to have these little bits of coordination throughout the project and everyone working together to make sure that the end user is getting exactly what they want. Again, stuff that should be caught in the design process, but it's not always detailed out to that extent. All right, I really hope you took something away from this plumbing drawing review video. I had a great time making it and please hit that subscribe button so we can help grow this channel to reach a further audience. Also, don't be shy. Drop me a comment below if you'd like me to make any other specific video that I haven't covered yet. And as always, be better, build better, and bye for now.